स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड इन स्टूडेंट वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट रिटोलिसिस बट बिफोर गोइंग टू रिटोलिस आई वुड लाइक टू से यू दैट इफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी वॉस्ड माई अर्लियर वीडियोज ऑन पीरियडिक प्रोपर्टीज एंड केमिकल बॉन्डिंग दिस टॉपिक विल बी वेरी इजी टू यू बट इफ यू डोंट सो प्लीज गो एंड वॉच दो वीडियो एंड देन गम यर अदरवाइज वट आई विल गॉन्ट से ओवर इयर विल बी क्वाइट डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू माई एडवाइस टू यू प्लीज डू दिस ओके बट जस्ट फॉर अ क्विक रिविजन आई एम गिविंग यू अर शॉर्ट रिकैप सो आई हैव टोल्ड यू ऑन द पीरियडिक प्रोपर्टीज दैट ग्रुप वन एंड टू टू एलिमेंट्स आर वेरी गुड कॉन्डक्टर्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड इलेक्ट्रोलिसिट एज इट इज समथिंग रिलेटिंग टू द कंडक्शन ऑफ करेंट सो वी मस्ट नो दैट हाउ दे आर मेटल्स और नॉन मेटल्स दे आर गुड एंड बैड कॉन्डक्टर्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी रेस्पेक्टिवली द लेफ्ट साइड एलिमेंट्स ऑफ पीरियडिक टेबल्स दे इजिली लूज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दैट इज देर इज अ free electrons available to them for example the group 1 element um, sodium it has electronic configuration of 281 and thus when it releases one electron from its outermost shell it becomes sodium plus where the electronic configuration of 2 is 2,8 and this is like neon that is the inert gas so thus sodium releasing one electron it become uh, stable and that is why group group 1 and group 2 elements have tendency general tendency to lose electrons and that is they are available free electrons and these free electrons ultimately play the role to conduct electricity uh, but non metals like the right side element of periodic tables they they don't have any free free electrons because their tendency is only to gain electrons so that they can get electronic configuration like inert gas for example fluorine so electronic configuration of fluorine is 2,7 so if it get one electron more it will be f minus and electronic configuration uh, will be 2,8 2,8 and thus it will get electronic configuration like neon and thus become stable so their tendency is to accept electron so they cannot conduct electricity similarly i have also told you that in metals when they are in solid state they stay in this manner where this is the cation or the metal atoms uh, that lose one electron from its outermost shell their free electrons uh, become available similarly other metals of uh, group 1 and 2 they also uh, release one or more electrons and thus thus they make free electrons available and that, and that is why they conduct electricity so um, that is why they are good conductor of electricity but non metals having tendency to accept electrons they are bad conductor of electricity now i have also told you that ionic compound they are good conductor of electricity because for example nacl so in nacl they exist in na plus plus cl minus form so here there is a strong electrostatic force of attraction between the sodium atom and chloride chloride atom and but here you can see that there are there are free char free charges available in nsl that is positive charge and negative negative charge actually when uh, we conduct we pass electricity through any solution of nsl uh, or when nsl is in molten state the electrostatic force of attraction between sodium atom and chloride atom get reduced and thus they separate from each other and thus making this uh, free ions or free charges available to the solution and that that is why they conduct electricity okay i will uh, give an example shortly uh, similarly polar covalent compound i have also told that uh, non metallic compound they mostly form covalent bond between them but there are some polar co covalent bond also available for example acl due to their large electronegativity difference uh, chlorine has a tendency to attract the bonding electron pair towards itself and thus they thus making the bond quite vulnerable and easily dissociable in in water medium okay and thus they are also making the free charges available and thus conducting conducts electricity so they are good conductor of electricity but in non polar covalent compound as there is no charge separation they are bad conductor they even don't dissolve in water molecule because there is no charge separation between them okay so this this electrovalent compound you can say ionic compound or electrovalent compound 
they actually play the role uh, in electrolysis so it is the process of decomposition of a chemical compound in aqueous solution or in molten state accompanied by a chemical change by using direct electric current so now i i have told you that uh, nacl conducts electricity when uh, they are in aqueous solution because in aqueous solution uh, the charge the sodium and uh, cl minus atom gets separated due to the polar uh, nature of water molecule um, so you can see that na plus and cl minus so when um, h plus or h3o plus positive ions of water molecule come closer to chloride ion they pulls the chloride ion towards itself similarly when the negative ions hydroxyl ion um, came in contact with uh, sodium plus uh, this have positive charge it also pulls the sodium plus ion towards itself and thus making the bond vulnerable and thus the bond breaks and in water molecules sodium plus and chloride ion getting get separated and thus uh, there is uh, free charges sodium plus and cl minus is available this process actually the decomposition in aqueous solution so now just i have told you that in a cl or sodium chloride solution participate in electrolysis this type of compound is called electrolytes so electrolytes are compounds salts or solution of salts which either in aqueous solution or in molten state allow electric current to pass through them you have to also remember that there is a two three kind of electrolytes strong electrolyte weak electrolyte non electrolyte so strong electrolyte are those electrolytes which allow a large amount of electricity to flow through them and weak electrolytes are those that allow a small amount of electrons to flow through them and actually strong electrolytes are those that dissociate completely in aqueous solution for example in a cell i have told you there that in a cell completely dissociate in water or in aqueous solution so they are good conductor of electricity but for example nh4oh it is a partial dissociate in water solution that is why it is a weak electrolyte similarly there are non electrolytes also available uh, for example organic molecules or you can say covalent compound they there is no charge separation in between them that is why they do not conduct any electricity and for example you can say sugar benzene alcohol there is no charge separations or no ions in between them that is why they do not conduct any type of electricity now so what is electrolytic cell electrolytic cell is a non conducting vessel containing two electrode immersed in a solution of electrolyte used to bring about a chemical reaction now uh, you can see that these anode and cathode and they are electrodes okay so they are actually two metal plates or wires or graphite rods or they may be gas carbon rods immersed in the electrolyte now what is electrolytes i have told you just now i hope you don't forget it actually their uh, work is to accept positive and negative charges and we know what is positive charge positive charge for example here you can see sodium plus it is actually cation and this is a uh, chloride ion that is actually an ion you can see there is a battery and the positive end of the battery is attached with the anode and the negative end of the battery is attached with the cathode so similar you can say that as there is the emission of electron through this end cathode will be of negative charge it will be negative electrode similarly as there is a positive end uh, attached with anode it will be a positive it will be a positive charge or positive electrode when we pass electricity or we on the battery uh, there will be a current there will be a flow of current uh, in between them because here anode is becoming positively charged and cathode is become becoming negatively charged and now we have also seen that in aqueous solution positive and negative charges in this electrolyte electrolytes and now as anode it is a positively 
charged and cathode is a negatively charged electrode so definitely the cations will tend to move towards uh, cathode and the negative charges of these electrolytes will tend to move to anode so there will be a flow of current you can see that you can say flow of charges within the electrolytes so this process is actually electrolysis and this is actually chemical change because uh, you can take an example of uh, NaCl. So when NaCl is in aqueous solution, sodium atom, it releases one electron from its outermost shell and thus become Na+. Similarly, chloride ion, uh, sorry, chlorine atom, it accepts this electron and thus becomes Cl-. So here you can see the uh, oxidation state of sodium is zero. Oxidation number of sodium is zero, but oxidation number of sodium plus is plus one. Similarly, chlorine, it has oxidation number zero and um, chloride ion has oxidation number minus one. So there is a decrease in oxidation number. So that is why it is a reduction. Similarly, there is an increase in oxidation number. That is why it is a oxidation. Now, oxidation and reduction can be defined in other ways too. But here, I just want to say that there is a chemical reaction. Okay. Chemical change in uh, between this electrolytes in a cell, aqueous solution of in a cell. This is oxidation and reduction. That is why we have said that there is a chemical change in electrolysis. Previously, I have given you a general idea about oxidation and reduction. But... Uh, Oxidation is actually the process in which an atom or an ion loses electron. Just I have told you that here an atom loses an electron. Similarly, you can see that oxidation uh, is a chemical process which involves addition of oxygen and removal of hydrogen. For example, you can say that there is carbon and when we add oxygen to it or uh, when you burn carbon in presence of oxygen, it will produce CO2, CO2 gas. So there is addition of oxygen. So this is actually oxidation. But reduction, so reduction you can say that uh, there is a gaining of one electron. That is why it is a, uh, it is called as reduction. And it is also defined as a, actually the inverse of oxidation. So which involves the removal of oxygen. So, for example, you can say that uh, there is a metallic oxide, CO. When we react hydrogen gas with it, it will produce copper metal plus H2. So, there is a removal of oxygen atom, oxygen from this cupric oxide. And thus, it produces copper ion. Here you can see that the oxidation number of uh, cupric oxide is plus 2. X plus 2 x minus 2 is equal to 0 is equal to 2. Now how to determine oxidation number I will tell you in another video. So uh, just for this video have a uh, very brief idea that oxidation number of cupric oxide is plus 2 over here and oxidation number of copper metal is 0 over here. Thus, this is a reduction in its oxidation number. And thus, it is a reduction. You know, this idea that where there is, uh, the, this idea of oxidation number is very important. Because it is the ultimate definition of oxidation and reduction. Okay. Now, another type of uh, definition can also be given. For example, oxidation is the process there observed removal of hydrogen. For example, H2S. When you react Cl2 with it, it will produce 2HCl plus sulfur. So, there is a removal of hydrogen from H2S and thus producing H2S. So, this is the oxidation because this is the removal of hydrogen. Again, uh, actually I have told you just now that reduction is actually the exact opposite of uh, oxidation. There, is, there will be the addition of hydrogen. So, the if we write the same reaction, Cl2, plus H2S that it that will produce sulfur plus 2 HCl. So here you can see that there is a uh, addition of hydrogen to this chlorine atom to this chlorine molecule and thus producing 2 HCl. So this is a um, reduction uh, because there is an addition of hydrogen is occurred. 
So now just I have told you that anode is positively charged electrode. So definitely the negative charge will move on to anode. Similarly in this NaCl solution the chloride ion will move on to uh, anode and thus uh, it donates its one electron to anode. Cl minus donates its one electron to anode and thus become chloride ion. So here you can see that the oxidation number is increasing or uh, there is a there is a donation of electron so it is uh, it is an oxidation and so there occur an oxidation similarly cathode being negative charged all the positive charge will move on to cathode and thus they will accept one electron from cathode and thus become for example sodium in a plus when it move on to uh, when it move on to add cathode, it will accept one electron and thus become Na. So here is the reduction of oxidation number or gaining of one electron. Thus it is a reduction. So in cathode, reduction takes place. Now move on to electrochemical series. So this series is actually based on the ease with which atoms of metal lose electrons. So I have told you that metal atoms, they lose electrons from their outermost shell and thus they, they produce free electrons and that actually participates in conduct, conductance and thus we get electricity or current. Okay, so here I have written the electrochemical series of metal. So you can see that I have written decreasing tendency to make cations. So it means that if we move from top to bottom along a electrochemical series, we'll found that the uh, top side elements have generally more tendency to lose electrons from their outermost shell. But the lower side elements, they have generally less tendency to become cations. But here you can see that there is increasing tendency to get discharged at cathode. So I have told you earlier that uh, in electrolysis process, um, the positive cations, the positive charge, positive ions, they move on to negative electrode, that is cathode. And there they accept electrons and be get discharged. So their tendency is gradually increasing from top to bottom. So now, this kind of uh, uh, electrochemical series has generally no uh, such explanation. But this series has been found for a lot of research and experiments. So for my, my advice to you, just please keep a, a strong uh, view on this uh, series so that you can easily solve the questions asked from this uh, electrochemical series. This series is highly important in electrolysis. So you have must have to remember this. Okay, next move on to anions. So here you can see that uh, this is the series of anions. So there the increasing tendency to get discharged at, at anode or you can say increasing tendency to lose electrons or oxidation. So I have told you that what is oxidation? In oxidation atom generally lose electrons and thus it becomes uh, positively charged. Or you can say that here the oxidation number of atoms increased. Um, so if this anion somehow accept electrons, and I have told you before that in electrolysis process, this anions move on to anode, that is positively charged electrode. And there they, uh, they donate their electrons. And uh, as they donate their electrons, they become a neutral atom. And in this case, in this case, their oxidation number increased. From here you can see, uh, from chlorine, Cl minus, if it donates one electron, it will become chlorine atom and then uh, the oxidation number of chlorine is zero. And while the oxidation number of chlorine, uh, Cl minus is minus one. So actually there is an increase in oxidation number, that is why it is an uh, oxidation. Mm, so you can say that uh, if we move from top to bottom along a Electrochemical series of anions will see that uh, their tendency is gradually increasing to get discharged at anode or their tendency to lose their electrons at anode is gradually increasing. So it means that topmost element or um, top side elements they will get preference to discharge their electrons than the uh, bottom side elements. 
so i hope you understand the things what i am want to say now move on to some examples first thing is dilute cuso4 solution i have told you that copper sulfate solution is of blue color so when we uh, take uh, cuso4 that is a electrovalent compound and actually this is cuso4 solution is actually electro electrolytes over here so when we will take this cuso4 solution or electrolytes in a electrolytic cell then there will be two kinds of reaction first here you can see that this ionic compound cuso4 will uh, decompose in cu plus 2 plus so4 2 minus but here you here when the ions electrolytic compounds uh, dissociate this is uh, in polar solvent it will be uh, dissociation okay but when any polar covalent compound like hcl uh, it will uh, dissociate in water solution it will be called as ionization because in this case here hcl hydrogen and chlorine atom was bonded by a covalent bond but here you can see that in ionic bond like co support it was in ions cu plus 2 ion and so for to minus ion and there is only a electrostatic force of attraction between them that holds the two atoms together so this is actually dissociation of ions for polar covalent compound it will be ionization now so here h2 polar covalent compound polar uh, solvent it will also dissociate in h plus and oh minus and here you can see there are two cations cu plus 2 and h plus and there is two anions so 4 2 minus and oh minus so i have told you that cations move on to negative cathode so in cathode react in cathode there will be cu plus 2 and h plus but i have previously just told you that uh, as you can see that in electrochemical series is uh, H plus is uh, as of Cu plus 2 just above Cu, uh, Cu plus 2 and you can see I have written that um, increasing tendency to give, get discharged at cathode that means the bottom side element will have more tendency to get discharged at cathode easily so definitely uh, here um, uh, see between copper plus 2 and H plus copper plus 2 will get the preference and thus it will get easily discharged in cathode now for anode there is two anions so for 2 minus and OH2 OH minus so in this case definitely um, as you can see that in this an uh, electrochemical synthesis of anions as so for 2 minus is above OH minus and I have written over here that increasing tendency to get discharged at anode this means that bottom side element will easily get discharged than the top side top side elements that is why um, here OH minus as this is below so for 2 minus in electrochemical series it will get easily discharged at anode and thus it will produce uh, you can see that uh, OH minus 4 OH minus lose its 4 electron at, cat at anode and thus produce 4 OH and then 2 OH 2 OH combined to form 2 H2 molecule and 1 oxygen molecule so here this is uh, actually produce oxygen gas and how you can determine the oxygen gas the process is you will have to held a glowing splint near the cell and you will see that the splint will be reignited and these things these experiment it identifies or it uh, confirms that there is oxygen gas is emitting from this solution now next move on to concentrated NaCl solution one thing I must say you, the relative position of ions in the electrochemical series is highly important on which the discharge of ions depends on. So as uh, here you can see the cations, their positions in electrochemical uh, series determines whether uh, copper plus 2 or OH minus, SO4 2 minus get discharged or not. It depends. Similarly, relative concentration of ions is also important on which it depends that what what ions will easily discharge or uh, get preference to discharge in um, anode or cathode respectively. So, first thing that considered in NaCl solution. So, NaCl dissociates to produce Na plus and Cl minus ion. 
H2O, H plus, OH minus. And here you can see this is two cations, Cn plus and H plus. And there Cl minus and OH minus. So these two move direct to cathode. And there you can see as Cn plus is just above H plus. So definitely H plus will have more tendency to uh, get discharged easily. In this case, H plus will get the preference and it will lose its one electron and thus produce hydrogen gas. And for anode, um, you will say that there is a Cl minus and OH minus. But as we are using concentrated NaCl solution, so the concentration of Cl minus is greater than OH minus. Cl minus stays above OH minus in later chemical series. But as the concentration of Cl minus is higher than OH minus, Cl minus will get preference and it will easily get discharged in um, anode and thus it will produce chlorine gas. So in cathode there is, pro there is producing hydrogen gas and in anode there is producing chlorine gas. Now dilute NaCl solution. So there is everything okay. Just the decompose like before that you can see NaCl, Na plus Cl minus H2, H plus OH minus. In cathode the reaction is same but you can see in anode. What happens in anode? It will follow the rule as there is uh, OH minus uh, being uh, here OH minus will get preferred and thus it will produce oxygen gas. Now let's see some examples on electrolysis. So the first thing is electrolysis of molten lead bromide. And in this case, we will use a temperature above 380 degree. Here the electrolytic cell is crucible made of silica because it is non-reactive. Temperature resistant because you know in this case, uh, silica, uh, it can easily resist the higher temperature that we are going to use in this electrolysis process. And it is non-conductor of electricity. Okay, and now we are using electrodes graphite plate. It's also non-reactive. Actually, mainly in electrolysis process, we used inert electrodes like graphite, platinum electrodes. But uh, why we don't use platinum electrodes over here? Well, what is the reason? We will learn shortly. Just uh, listen to me carefully. Okay, so why we are using high temperature over here? The reason is solid lead bromide is non-conductors. There is no free ions. There its ions are firmly held by the electrostatic force of attractions between those cations and the free electrons. But if we apply the heat to melt lead bromide, there is an increase in the vibration of the metallic atoms. And thus I have told you previously that uh, if we increase the temperature, the volume will increase. It means that the distance between the molecules will increase. It means that the force of attraction between them gets decreased. That is how the distance between them is increasing as the attractive force is getting lessened over here. So in this case, when we just heated up this small lead bromide, the, the attractions, the electrostatic attraction that was between them previously when they are in solid is getting reduced and thus it produces free charges and thus the ions become free. When we will uh, use this molten lead bromide in electrolysis, we will uh, find a conductance within it. Okay, so that is why you are using a high temperature over here. Yeah, you can also use aqueous solution of lead bromide because, you know, water can also play the same role to separate the ions, to free the ions. Now, electrodes, graphite plate. Okay, now move on to the reaction. So, here you can see that there is molten lead bromide and there is cations, is lead. So, when molten bromide, molten lead bromide or lead bromide get dissociated, it will produce one lead 2 plus uh, Pb2 plus ions, cations and two Br minus ions. And now this lead Pb2 plus uh, in, at cathode, it uh, easily get discharged and thus producing Pb as lead, as solid. It is of silvery gray, gray color and you can easily observe that uh, the lead or the silvery gray lead are accumulating or depositing at cathode. 
Similarly, you can see it anode. As anode is positively charged, the bromide ions get discharged in uh, anode and thus it will produce bromine gas. This is of reddish brown fumes. So you will find that there is a reddish brown fumes is emitting from the litholytic cell. That is the reason we, we don't use platinum electrode with molten lead bromide because graphite plate is non-reactive. It don't react with the, the bromine gas. But platinum easily react with bromine and thus it can produce PTBR4 platinum bromide. That is why we use graphite plate over here. Now, next is electrolysis of acidified water using platinum electrodes. Now, here we can use platinum electrodes because in this case there is no reaction between the electrolysis, electrolytes and the electrodes. So, here you can see that we are using acidified water. So, there is acid and uh, water. So, you can see electrolyte there is water plus H2SO4. We will use only H2SO4 because dilute sulfuric acid is non volatile. While you will use dilute nitric acid or hydrochloric acid, it is volatile acids. So, let's move on. So, water dissociates and we uh, produce H plus OH minus. H2SO4 dissociate to produce 2H plus SO4 2 minus. And then in, at cathode, as there is only ions cations is H plus so H plus will discharge and thus produce hydrogen gas so here you can see that H plus it gets one electrons from cathode and thus producing H plus sorry hydrogen atom and two hydrogen atom combines to produce hydrogen gas and it at anode OH minus lose one electrons uh, yeah as there is uh, it uh, there is two anions, OH minus and SO4 two minus. But you can see, I have already told you that SO4 two minus leaves uh, over a OH two minus in electro electrochemical series. That is why SO4 two minus has uh, less tendency to get discharged easily. And here, that is the reason why OH minus get preferred, uh, get reference to uh, discharge easily. So thus, OH minus get discharged and it produce. Uh, uh, OH minus uh, discharging one electron become OH atom and two OH atom combines to produce H2 and one oxygen atom and two oxygen atom combines to produce oxygen gas. Now, actually in this electrolysis we will use this kind of apparatus. So, here you will use this water and dil dilute H2SO4 acidified water and there will be a cathode and anode and here it is uh, producing hydrogen and oxygen uh, cathode and anode respectively. Just to identify the hydrogens and oxygen gas, we will use this kind of apparatus. So, how to identify oxygen? So, I have already told you, but how to identify hydrogen gas? So, this is a very interesting identification process. If you held a lighted splint near its mouth, near its mouth, it will make a squeaky pop sound, but it will not extinguish the splint. Okay, only the pop sound will identify that there is the presence of hydrogen gas. And that's how we will determine that uh, here you, there's hydrogen, there's the emission of hydrogen gas. So now, one thing you must remember that there is the uh, production of hydrogen and oxygen is 2 is to 1 ratio. So if you look at this reaction uh, very carefully, you will find that there is one H plus ion only become hydrogen and two hydrogen atom combines to produce one hydrogen gas, one molecule of hydrogen. And here you also see that OH minus, it's giving up one electron and producing OH molecule and these two OH molecule combines to form uh, one H2 molecule and oxygen. And these two oxygen atom combines to produce one molecule of oxygen. So there is actually, so we are actually getting one oxygen molecule from 4 OH minus ion. So here you can see that there is 2 H plus ion that finally produce one volume of um, hydrogen gas. But while there is 4 OH minus that is producing one oxygen gas. So thus you can see that if we see that there will be 4H plus ion needed to produce 2H2. So when we will compare the H plus and OH minus ion, 
having the same uh, amount we will find that there is 2 is to 1 ratio in between hydrogen and oxygen. So here you can see that the acidity of at cathode will in decrease while acidity at anode will increase because uh, we see that OH- minus and SO4 2 minus both anions will move towards anode to get discharged but only OH- minus will get discharged but SO4 2 minus will remain as it was before uh, on the other side of cathode the hydrogens H plus ions move there to get discharged but there is less concentration of SO4 2 minus at cathode so that is why the concentration of sulfuric acid will decrease at cathode but you can see at anode that the discharge of OH minus disturbs the ionic equilibrium of water and to maintain it more water ionizes and the excess H of H plus ions that's produced and the SO4 2 minus ions pre present at uh, near to the anode will combine and increase the concentration of sulfuric acid at anode. So finally we will say that acidity of cathode is decreased while acidity of anode is increased due to this kind of reaction. Now move on to electrolysis of copper sulfate solution using platinum anode and platinum cathode. Okay, so we are using platinum anode and cathode electrodes because they are non-reactive I have told you just before and in this case copper sulfate solution will give this kinds of ion I have told you earlier that COSO4 will decompose to produce Cu plus 2 plus SO4 2 minus while uh, mo water molecule will decompose in OH minus ion and H plus ion and there is thus uh, two cations and two anions and um, these anions will move on to uh, anode and these cations will move on to cathode so and thus I have also uh, told you there that Cu plus 2 uh, get preference at cathode and here you will you see that the copper metal that are deposited at cathode. I have also told you the reaction of what happens at anode. There is the emission of oxygen gas at cathode. So I have told you there. Uh, now what happens if we use copper electrodes that is a reactive electrodes due to this uh, copper and uh, anode copper get discharged and copper metal that discharging two electron becomes Cu2 plus and this Cu2 plus will then move on to cathode and thus accept two electrons from cathode and become copper and this uh, this copper metal will deposited at cathode so actually there is a decay of anode because in this case a copper is becoming copper Cu2 plus and moving on to cathode so what happens that at anode there will be decaying of the electrode but in cathode there will be accumulation or deposition of copper metal so cathode will become thicker while anode will become thinner due to this decaying so other ions for example I have told you earlier that there are other ions too for example water molecules for example H plus OH minus ion um, even SO4 2 minus ion from CuSO4 they will Will remain intact they will not react anymore and thus they they this type of anions uh, we will say them as spectator anions because they only see they, they, they only watch what are happening they are not doing anything Okay, so one thing, uh, one interesting thing I must say over here, as there is electrolysis of copper sulfate solution, we are seeing that copper sulfate solution is participating in this electrolysis reaction. So there will be uh, the the color of copper sulfate solution, that is the blue color of copper sul aqueous copper sulfate solution, will become pale. But in case of uh, this thing where there is a electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate using copper electrodes as the copper electrodes react and other ions remains as uh, before and thus the color of the solution will remain as as before there is no change in the color of the solution so I hope that uh, you understand all the thing that I have told you in this video um, so if you have any doubts, any queries, please go straight to the comment section, ask me. If you want the short notes, please mail me. I have given my mail address at the description box. 
check it and mail me i will provide the pdf of this short notes to you and to get more videos like that please subscribe like and share thank you for watching